Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look at the spiritual consequences of alcohol intake, the theosophical spiritual consequences of alcohol intake, the prehistoric influences of alcohol intake, and the consequences thereof. Now I, I have living proof here. There's one. This is one of four mug shots taken in March of 2002. Um, Fifteen and a half years ago, I literally was in a living hell. Absolutely, without doubt. And uh, I, I talk about that. I try to keep my personal life out of these, these videos, but I must say I have personally experienced this. The word alcohol, um, the origin of the word alcohol is extremely interesting and insightful. If we take a look at it, I was sent an article called The Spiritual Consequences of Alcohol Consumption. I was asked my thoughts about this. This is a brilliant article written by a gal named Zara Sitta. So I'll include a link down below to the article. The origin of the word alcohol comes from Arabic, old Arabic, which means al-gal, okay? Al-gal, the ghoul. It's where we got the word ghoul. That's where the English word ghoul comes from, which means to uh, consume corpses, or it is a demon believed to rob graves. It is also known as the genie spirit or demon. So Al-Gal, that's where we got the word alcohol. Al-Gal is also the name of a star in the constellation Perseus, and is known for, if you study mythology, Perseus has slayed the dragon, right? And it's got the head of the dragon, the Gorgon. It's, it's as synonymous with losing your head or being decapitated or great difficulty or pain and suffering. So Al Gaul, if you take a look, just Google it if you don't believe me, take a look at the meaning of this particular star in the constellation Perseus, which is actually two stars circling around each other and it was really bright. So the Arabs and the, the Romans and the Greeks have always associated this with, um, with difficulty, trauma, drama. It is known as the demon star. Alcohol. That's where we got the word alcohol. So when I was putting this video together, I thought about gin. J-I-N-N. Gin. Or G-I-N. Gin. Gin is also an old Arabic word meaning demon, spirit, angel, or genie. One who can appear in human and animal forms and even take possession of the human. Gin can also mean to hide or possess, conceal, and can also mean insane. Jinn, the G-I-N that we know, is supposedly from Geneva, Switzerland. They can't figure that out. Or possibly the juniper berries that were used to flavor gin because it tasted like crap. Either way, gin, alcohol, gin, algal. I thought I'd throw that in there. The Indians call it fire water, and it is synonymous with being a spirit. So I, I know that I drank until I became a spirit, until I was a ghost of myself. And spirits, the word spirits, why is that used with alcohol? Well, I think there's a, another meaning there. Uh, they say that when the monks would distill, it was the, you know, the, the condensation or whatever rising up. But I believe there's much more to the story. I do. And in my own personal experience, uh, rarely has alcohol ever led to uh, donating time for charity or loving kind events or becoming a better person or compassion, kindness and peace. Usually it is the opposite. Usually it is rampant lust and having sex with everybody all around you. It leads to crime, to fighting, to fear, to anger. Have you ever noticed that? I would have to say, when my husband and I went to go see, I think it was The Conjuring. We saw it at the movie theater. I think it's the last movie we ever saw. But anyway, um, the possession scene, I remember leaning over to him and saying, that's what it feels like. That's exactly what alcoholism feels like. It feels like you're being taken over by something, uh, but you're in there somewhere, but you still act and do things that you would never do. You put yourself in places you would never, when you are not inebriated, not intoxicated, ever put yourself in. You would never do that to yourself, but you do, and you keep going back to it when you have alcohol. Hollywood may come up with pointy ear devils and pokey little pitchforks, but that's not it. The real demon, the real dark, is, is when you are not present in your physical body. As a matter of fact, in the book that you're here for, The Yogi Philosophy and Oriental Occultism, which is the book that I read, which led me to the study of theosophy, I read that book for free. It's on this channel. It's also available um, on Yogi Theosophy, or you can find it uh, in audiobooks. It doesn't matter. I want to read to you from that book. Uh, when I got this article, I thought, oh my gosh, okay, this is so very similar. This is written back in 1904, 1905. And uh, this teaching goes back as old as time. This is written by Rama Shiraka, which is a pen name from William Walker Atkinson. From the 10th chapter, The Astral Plane. 
The very lowest planes of the astral plane are filled with souls of a gross type, undeveloped and animal-like, who live as near as possible the lives they lived on Earth, about the only thing they gain being the possibility of their living out their gross tastes and becoming sick and tired of it all, and thus allowing to develop a longing for higher things which will manifest in a better chance when they are reborn. These undeveloped souls cannot, of course, visit the upper planes, and they often flock back as near to Earth as is possible. They may be said to be able to practically live on the low material plane, except that they are separated from it by a tantalizing thin veil, which prevents them from actively participating in it, except on rare occasions. And they may see but not join in the Earth life. They hang out around the scenes of their old degrading lives and often take possession of the brain of one of their own kind, who may be under the influence of liquor and thus add to his own low desires. All right, that is from Yogi Philosophy and Oriental Occultism and Theosophical Teachings. HPB points this out in the Important to Students. Um, she's written here, these are some of the rules that apply in practical occultism. Now, chill out, because occultism means unknown or unknown now. It does not mean the dark arts. It can mean, because that was always unknown or often unknown. Occultism simply means outside the norm, outside of your awareness right now. For example, here are these papers. They are now in the occult. You don't see them. Now you do. Now you don't. They're unknown where they're at. <laughs> okay, so anyway. In practical occultism, she writes, important to students, the rules which apply to certain practices and modes of thought and living, which must be strictly followed by anyone, any man or woman, who wishes to become a true and effective helper of humanity in their own right. No wine, no spirits, or opium should be used, for these are like the Lamayan. These are evil spirits who fasten upon the unwary. They devour the understanding. Now, this was written back in the 19th century. Okay. She also references in this book back there, The Key to Theosophy, she writes that the effects of alcohol are worse for your moral and spiritual growth than meat, for alcohol in all its forms has a direct, marked, and very deleterious, which means harmful or destructive, deadly, influence on man's psychic condition. Wine and spirit drinking is only less destructive to the development of the inner powers than the habitual use of hashish, opium, and similar drugs. She writes that the use of alcohol has a directly pernicious or destructive action upon the brain, particularly the pineal gland, okay, the pituitary gland. Alcohol prevents the development of the third eye. And the use of wine, spirits, and liquors of any kind or any narcotic or intoxicating drug is strictly prohibited. Okay, because if indulged in, all progress is hindered and the effects of teacher and pupil alike are rendered useless. So, there you have it. Alcohol, the spiritual effects, the consequences, the theosophical consequences. I have been there. I wasn't always like that, but it was a descent that happened over a period of time because I was a disc jockey. And so there was sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and then there was just sex and drugs, and then there was just drugs. So, anyway, I will tell you that was 15 years ago, and I've been there, and it is hell. And there's lots of people in that place right now. There is darkness. There are dark energies. This is a low frequency. You are vacating your body and therefore allowing it to be entered. And I guarantee you there is a life outside of that. There is a life beyond your wildest dreams waiting for you. If you will only allow. Thank you for letting me share. I love you.